In today's video, I'm gonna share my top five vocal production tips to take your vocals to the next level. Vocals really are the centerpiece of modern production. So knowing how to use these tools and techniques to create the sounds that you hear on your favorite records and also to enhance the emotion of the song is of utmost importance. Vocal production is personally one of my favorite parts of the whole process. So I'm super excited to dive into this one. So let's go. So I'm gonna share five techniques that I use on a daily basis. So technique one is formant and pitch shifting. So let's take our acapella and just listen to it as is. Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long, but something brings me back to you. Cool, so lovely splice vocal acapella. So we're gonna go to vocal transformer. In Logic, let's just use some stock stuff. So we have a bog standard pitch shifter. So all we need to worry about here is pitch and formant. There's a mix knob to mess around with stuff and you can blend it into taste, but I want to show you the extremes of what you can do with this. So pitch shifting, we're literally just shifting things up. So you can use this to, you know, change the key, um, but rather than for, for like utility, we're using this creatively for vocal production purposes. Let's listen to it an octave up. So that's 12 semitones. Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long, but something brings me back to you. Classic, you would have heard that on a million records. This too. Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long, but something brings me back to you. So we're just bringing it up an octave, down an octave, you can do it. Another octave. Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long. But that sounds like a wet fart. So what we want to play around with is the formant as well, which is like the throat length. So basically think of it like when you're bringing the formant up, it's making it more nasal and kind of chipmunky. And then when you're bringing the formant down, it's making it more throaty, chesty, and it's like bringing it further back in the vocal tract. So it's, it's essentially kind of doing that. So let me show you that in action. Let's bring the formant down 12 semitones. So that's my personal taste, my favorite. I like that, that kind of tone. Uh, let's do it the other way. Y2K hip hop stuff had loads of, loads of that stuff. So what you can do is play around with a combination of the two. So you would have heard this a million times. So we're bringing the formant down and we're bringing the pitch down as well. And then a really cool thing that you can do here, which is, like I said, you would have heard this in a million songs, especially modern pop and EDM stuff. Let's put a sample delay on there so that we get it out of the way of the center of the vocals. And then this is like a cool. And then you could also do the opposite. So let's put a sample delay and then skew it the other side so that it's in its own space in the stereo spectrum. And then let's make it a high one. Now, what I like to do is, uh, I spelled octave wrong, is bring the pitch up an octave, but bring the formant down, leave the formant, excuse me, so bring, leave the, the formant down minus 12, and then pitch it up plus 12. Now, if you listen to Anne-Marie, Anne-Marie has a ton of this in her stuff. So let's listen to it like that. Rather than if I bring the formant up, It sounds really chipmunky. And to me, that sounds tacky. That's just a taste preference. Um, works in a lot of songs. It's, it's up to you to make that decision. And then in the center, Feels right when it's wrong. beautiful. It just sounds like he's doing falsetto. So you can either make it sound like he's just singing in falsetto, um, or you can actually make it an effect. In this instance, I want to make it an effect. Um, so let's do the low and the high. Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long, but something brings me back to you. So we've instantly digitally got 
two octaves filling it out and we've got them out the sides so you can play around with that the sky's the limit you can add you know other effects and stuff to it reverb chorus mod other modulation flanges phasers you know you can use side chain and duck it you can pan it left and right it's uh, an endless fun game which brings me on to technique number two so we are going to talk about stuttering and tremolo so let's use it on the lead vocal first for me to just show you it so let's just use uh, bog standard tremolo. So what tremolo does is it just plays around with placing it in the stereo spectrum and using an LFO to modulate it. Rather than worrying about all the technicality of it, let me just show you what it sounds like. So the rate is basically how quickly or slow do we want the movement to be. So one bar, it's gonna pan Feels right when it's wrong. every bar. Too long, but something brings me back to you. And then if I do it one to thirty second. Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long, but something brings me back to you. Now you know how to do I'm the bad guy. <laughs> so you you know exactly how to do that. How how does Phineas do that? Just automates this. So it goes Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long, but something brings me back to you. So he just automates it to to get faster, as she says, bad guy. And then the depth is basically like a mix. So you can see like how much how much do I want it to pan? Like do I want it to pan a hundred percent the whole signal, or do I want half of it to pan? Feels right when so it's softer, it's so it's still in the I've center. Too long, then it's just a little bit. Brings me back to you. And then the smoothing is like how sharp you want it to be. So if you want it to sound like really aggressive, you can bring the smoothing. Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long, but something brings me back to you. And then the phase is basically like skewing it as to like how. Feels right when it's wrong how far out you want it to be and then if you want it to be in the center you want it to essentially be a mono you can just put the face to zero and then we get more of a kind of stutter I swear we belong, I'm still hanging on, but something brings me back to you. So that's all you need to do when you want to stutter stuff. You can manually go in and create stutters by, you know, doing this and just stuttering it, you know, with mo with uh, automation. Feels right when it's wrong, stayed here too long. And, you know, that would take a while but if you want to get really granular you can do that if you just want something quick that's gonna hit it and create that that kind of movement like straight away and you can decide if you want it to pan um you can use tremolo and you can also just use tremolo rather than for the stuttering it could be just to pan it so let's use this as an example let's say i just wanted the high octave to pan gently from left to right so i could put it to like three four bars and then just do it like you know 70%. And now you can hear it gently panning from left to right. Just added a little cheeky bass just to give it some harmony. Uh, so that's number two. So technique three is modulation and this covers a range of different tools. So let me quickly walk you through a couple of them. So first off, we can start with chorus. So what chorus is doing is basically duplicating the signal and it's creating a pitch variation. And then you're using the rate the same way as tremolo does, it's an LFO. And as you play around with the rate, you're telling it how quickly you want it to modulate. And then the intensity is like how intense you want it to be. And then the mix is, do you want it 100% modulated or do you want it 50% or 10%? So let me show you it 100% so you can really get to understand what it sounds like. Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long, but something brings me back to you. I swear we belong. I'm still hanging on, but something brings me back to you. 
So that's the pitch being modulated and then if I do the intensity I swear we belong, I'm still hanging on, but something brings me back to you. So also what it's doing is creating width, so let me turn it on and off. Feels right when it's wrong. Center. Feels right when it's wrong. Not in the center, it's here. And it's also creating this kind of strange thing that's making you feel a little bit seasick. So you've got to be careful with chorus. Uh, normally what I use it for is, is to tuck things further away to so create a sense of depth and width. So what happens when you add chorus is it it brings the kind of upfrontedness of it back. So it's a great tool for pushing things back, but it also creates width as well. So it's great for uh, adding to like backing vocals and anything you kind of want to be back and not in the way of, of whatever's in the center. So it's a great mixing tool as well. So that's chorus, you know, when you go all the way, it sounds pretty weird and demonic. And then another form of modulation is a flanger. You would have heard this in so many old school records. And this is basically doing a similar thing. So flanges, phases and choruses are basically doing the same thing but they, they have a slightly different flavor. I can't dial into the scientific stuff. It's just too mind boggling for me, but let's hear what it sounds like, which is the most important thing. But something brings me back to you I swear we belong I'm still hanging on But something brings me back to you Flanges are also really cool I like to add them to drums I like to add them to pads and stuff Especially in like turns So like if the chorus ends And then there's a little turn before the, the second verse I can add like a flanger and turn it on And then dial the mix in to create this movement and like kind of source and vibiness just for that section. So it's like a little bit of ear candy. So you can experiment with that. And also we've got a phaser. Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long. But something brings me back to you. I swear we belong. I'm still hanging on. But something brings me back to you. So that's interesting. It's kind of got this weird off pitch kind of double. Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long, but something brings me back to you. So that's quite interesting because it's it's very subtle. It's something I'd probably use if I was doing a dark pop track. It's kind of eerie. There's that like off pitchedness, and it's just something's not quite right, and your brain can tell that something's off, and it's a little bit dark and eerie. So great tool for that kind of thing. Okay, technique four is one of my favorites and that's distortion and saturation. This is used in so many songs and it can be as aggressive or subtle as you want it to be. So let's start off with saturation. So all we really need to pay attention to here for the instance of just straight saturation is the drive and the mix knob. You can play around with this is also a multiband saturator. So I could just saturate certain parts of the frequency spectrum, but we don't need to worry about that right now. All we want to do is focus on how it sounds and the applications within production. So let's drive it hundred percent and listen to what it sounds like. Aggressive, gritty, angry, rocky. That's the kind of sound that when you drive something and it starts to distort. And saturation is just a type of distortion. We can play around with different amp simulations as well and you'll get a different tone and character. Feels right when it's wrong, I've stayed here too long, but something brings me back to you. So this is subtle tape and it's driven 100% and it's not even that. 
Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long. Definitely more air, a little bit more mid-range. So that's saturation, and then we can play around with distortion, which is gonna be more aggressive. So let's play around with a bit crusher because there's other applications here as well, because we can downsample it and play around with the resolution. So rap is the most aggressive. Let's just do the drive. Let me save your ears. So it's more fuzzy. And then if we play around with the resolution. And then we can downsample it. This is the sound of lo-fi and hyper-pop. If you want hyper-pop vocals, all you need to do is pair a bit crusher with some kind of widener, like a chorus or... And you can also just add some tuning and you can do the widening here as well. And then we can pair that with a vocal transformer, play around with the formant. So that's how you can get something like a like a hyper pop vocal and then just some classic distortion. It kind of smears everything together. So if you ever want to create like a kind of lousy vocal chop, if you add distortion, you kind of kill the humanness of it and it can start to make it sound like a synth so it's great for kind of stuff like like that and you can throw a reverb on there you can throw a delay you can filter it which brings me very nicely onto technique number five which is essentially two techniques but i wanted to show you the two together because one on its own is pretty boring so it's just filtering so we can just use an eq to filter out and shape the tone rather than approaching it as a mix engineer and you know really diving into any frequency build up and how we can enhance the tone and do all that kind of stuff this is more broad brush strokes because we're doing it as producers and i want to show you low pass high pass and band pass they're the main things you're going to use when you're shaping tone in terms of production decisions first off high pass You're basically just getting rid of all of the lows. The higher you go up, the thinner it's gonna be. And then low pass is the opposite. And then a band pass is gonna only allow the band that you allow so in this case, 400 to 4K, and you can just choose where you want that to be. And that's essentially it. So you can just shape the tone. So if you want it to sound more telephonic and mid-rangey, you can do a band pass like around here. If you want it to sound like it's further away and darker, you can do that. If you want it to sound super thin. And you can automate it, the, the, the mother of contrast automation, and you can just automate it to come up gently. You can do that kind of thing. You can play around with the cue. You can do all that kind of stuff. The sky really is 
the limit. And the next part of this is spatial processing. So that is reverb, delay, anything that's gonna put it in a space. So let's pair the two things together so that I can show you the kind of stuff that you can do. So let's say I kind of wanted to make this vocal a pad. So we've got our lead vocal here just doing its thing. I'm gonna filter out the highs. And then I'm gonna add a reverb. I'm gonna use Valhalla Vintage Verb. So reverb, mix how wet you want it to be. Pre-delay, how much you want the dry signal to come through before the reverb hits. So it's almost like, imagine kind of side chaining. It's kind of like that. It's just letting the initial dry signal come through for a certain amount of milliseconds before the reverb comes. So there's a gap whereas there isn't a gap now between the dry and the wet. Decay, how long you want the reverb to be. Damping, how damp you want the reverb to be and the frequencies that you want to do that. The shape and size, early versus late reflections. So when you clap, you get the initial reflection and then you get the late reflections from the furthest part of the space and you can dial that in and modulation it's got like chorus so it can add width and slight pitch variation and then eq is a built-in eq so you can filter out the highs and lows and shape the tone of the reverb so if i want it to be a pad i want really long decay And then I'm gonna bring the formant down. Got some build up there. And then I'm gonna add a tremolo at the end so that it gently pans from left to right. Vibe. Okay, so that's just one application of how you can use it. You can use reverb, you know, on the on the channel to You can do that. That's in one of Lauv's songs where he automates the mix on um oh, I forgot the name of the song. The really famous one with the vocal chop and he automates it so it's wet and it's a really short decay so it's like in a room uh you can do all that kind of stuff and then delay so let's say we wanted to add a nice little bit of delay to it as well so i'm using repeater you can use any delay for this most have a ping pong and spread so that's great so i want it to have like a real echo like this Again, just filtering. So we've got highs and lows, mix, color, feedback, which is how long you want the, de the echo to decay on for, spread, spreads it out, ping pong, pans it left to right. And then these are just delay models. So they affect the tone and character of it. So let's create a little bit more vibey source to the vocals. So let's say we wanted these vocals to be like 80s kind of vibe. Let's do that. Feels right when it's wrong. I've stayed here too long. But something brings me back to you I swear we belong I'm still hanging on But something brings me back to you Instantly you get that kind of more retro kind of sound That kind of Tame Impala kind of thing And you could do like a slap back delay which is like this Feels right when it's wrong I've stayed here too long But something brings me back to you I swear we belong, I'm still hanging on, but something brings me back to you. So it's kind of simulating slapping off the wall. So, you know, if you want that kind of smoky bar, like live feeling, kind of retro, you can play around with that and have like a slap back delay, which is like basically a really short decay. So it's like hits off and comes back rather than something like this, which is the opposite, which is what we call like echoes. I've stayed here too long, but something brings me back to you. 
which is more like ethereal and, and like a long trailing feedback, which creates that like kind of heavenly vibe. And then you compare that with something like reverb to make it even more. We can picture up an octave and create something like this. And then with the lead, you'd have this kind of effect. And let's add an extra bit of source to that. Let's add a bit crusher. I'd want to EQ that because it's bringing a, a, a harshness to it. So let's add like, like some saturation and drive it. Let's do it before the reverb and the delay so that the, the distortion is going into the reverb and delay rather than you distorting the reverb and delay. Both are going to have their own separate sound. But let's hear what that sounds like. <laughs> It's really nice that the long feedback of the delay is filling this space here. So you can also use reverb and delay throws. I'll leave those for a separate video, but that's also another production technique where you can basically just take one section and then make it 100% wet with the delay. And then it will create this throw just on one section. You can automate it as well. And there you have it five techniques to level up your vocal production game. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you wanna see more vocal production goodies, check out this video here where I share how I remade the vocals for What Was I Made For by Billie Eilish. And I walk through the whole recording process all the way down to the mixing and vocal production. And until next time, create courageously.